Greetings, people of Earth. I'm Rick Harold. Thanks for watching my video and listening to my podcast. Today I talk about the super revolution that's going on right now. No, not talking about a political revolution or anything like 1776 or anything like that. Certainly I am talking about something like the industrial or internet revolution. So what am I talking about? Well, the three main parts I think that are really going to change the way the world works um, are first, natural language processing, and not just artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, there's a lot of cool things in there, and it's revolutionary, don't get me wrong, but natural language processing is the interface to people. And I've done in some other videos and I'll have some other future videos how by being able to just to talk to people or talk to a device without having to go in through an interface, menus or whatever that you might not understand, more people can be able to use that particular device or that function that would not have been able to do that before. That opens up huge opportunities for everyone to be able to leverage knowledge and technology and various facilities that they could never have done before because it is just too complicated. And, and a simple example would be uh, someone who just eh, couldn't use a phone or some older people, I don't mean to pick on them, but might not know how to go to Wikipedia and go look something up. They can talk to Amazon Echo and just ask a question now. They don't have to know how to figure out, turn a desktop on or anything like that. They can get a lot of questions answered. That's just the beginning of the process. You can imagine a lot of the functionality that's out there today that's just too complicated, that there's no way even a regular person with a college degree is very smart and doesn't know how to do something because the technology or the interface is too hard, they'll be able to access that. Now, of course, the revolution is occurring as we're adding that in to all of our programs or applications or devices. So that's really big. Second part is 3D printing. Now, I had a recent video about 3D printing. I talked about this rocket this one company was printing. Uh, but it's not just rockets. It's just plastic, toys, screws, parts of things, changing how things are designed to be 3D printed. The fact that this design's being done 8,000 miles away and then you're printing it at the library or at your house or wherever. The distribution and connecting the creator to the consumer of a particular idea or piece of metal or jewelry or plastic mold book stand, whatever, instantaneously, effectively, um, is revolutionary. The, the lack of the need to not have to ship things, all the logistics involved and all that stuff is just not needed. And the 3D printer's resolution is increasing every month. They're getting better systems in terms of material printing, what types of things they can do, and the scope and size. And the designers are getting better at making things designed for 3D printing that's really going to change everything much like the industrial revolution this that's really big now imagine having natural language processing integrated where you can ask and questions and have things done not have to figure out how to order something or get something made by talking to it and then having it suddenly printed nearby or if you have to have a 3d printer or go to the library to print it wow that's that's amazing and of course this applies into business and it's more complicated there but the last part is peer-to-peer so it overlaps a little bit with what I was saying, but the idea here is in the past, uh, companies and services are very centralized. Governments are centralized in terms of things that have to get done. Um, peer to peer is becoming a bigger thing where, again, person A and person B, a creator and a user, can exchange information or something much more easily. So an example of that would be uh, Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. You don't need a central organization now. You have a set of pure set of machines that are able to process currency. Forget your opinion about cryptocurrency for now and the valuation of it. It's an example where you don't need a central government. It crosses boundaries. It's able to operate as a currency. Call currencies are based on people's faith or value in the currency anyway. That's a great peer to peer structure. Machine peer to peer. So there's a lot of machines where they operate in peer-to-peer -peer nature, where maybe I have a backup system. I want to back my files up. And, of course, you can back them up to a centralized location. That's great. But you're still reliant on the centralized location. 
But in reality, encrypted files, which can't be seen by anybody, I could back up on your machine. I could back it up on somebody else's machine. With peer-to-peer, -peer, where one machine talks to another, securely, of course, uh, we could leverage all these billions of machines and devices, and this is just backup, for storage, for processing power that's not being used. The amount of processing power and storage not being used over all these different devices is immense. So, again, this is a computer-based solution, but there's other situations where, in a different way, software could be running where you're work, working peer-to-peer -peer and talking one software talking to each other across servers as opposed to a centralized location. And there's a lot of benefits to that. There's a lot of challenges in that that's a little more complicated in terms of security. Some of it's easy security, some of it's not. Um, and then the physical solution of the peer-to-peer -peer is kind of like if you think about Uber. So it used to be you'd have whatever number of rental car companies there are. I don't know. What, I'll say there's 50. There's probably more than that, but 50 I would, could possibly come up with if I put my mind to it. With Uber, now granted you're going through Uber centralized Uber machine, but you're having the user, the creator of the device, in the case the driver, connect to a consumer. That's awesome, right? Because these cars are just sitting there. These people want to drive and provide service to these other people that are, need lifts. So that's, again, peer-to-peer. -peer. Now, a true peer-to-peer -peer there would be where you had a peer-to-peer -peer computer system underneath that where you didn't even need Uber to do it. It was processed through a peer-to-peer -peer network. Believe me, it, it'll be there. <laughs> There's opportunity to eliminate anybody in between in the middle. Technology eventually finds a way to do that so that you'd be interacting with this generic system. And I know there has to be how do you clear that these drivers aren't crazy people, blah, blah, blah. I get it. But you get the idea that connecting a creator, in this case a driver, to a user, somebody needs a lift, is peer-to-peer, -peer and it's awesome. Airbnb, very similar. Um, the last part's knowledge. So there are 7 billion people in the world. Of course, some of them are babies, and their knowledge is limited. <laughs> but connecting and allowing people to connect peer-to-peer is another area where you can share knowledge. Now, this this is a big open area, but that's a great opportunity. And the fact that there's language barriers it doesn't matter as much because you can translate somewhat automatically now. That's another other area where you can connect people who have knowledge or creators, ideas, solutions, whatever, to people who need them. That's a great area. So natural language processing, supported by AI, of course. 3D printing, and this peer-to-peer -peer concept or pattern, these three things are super revolutionary. And what I like about them is with any kind of technology, a lot of times governments and, and big organizations like to resist these kinds of things because it obviously changes the structure and gets rid of middlemen. And These things usually win. It, not always in the form that they are today, but when you can connect a consumer to a user, I mean a creator to a user, that's just the way to go. So that's my thoughts on <clears throat> Super Revolution. Let me know if you have any questions and take it easy.